Uh, good morning. God bless you guys. In Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, it is 840, May 24th. I want to share a few things with you guys this morning and keep this kind of short. You know, if you read a lot of the Psalms where King David, there, when he was ruling over him, God said, I'll find a man after my own heart. And King David came in. Well, you look at how King David, a lot of the Psalms he wrote, uh, how long will the wicked uh, be here doing what they're doing in this world? You know, they just wanted their peace and their little bit of land, their, their people that they were. And uh, yet that area, they constantly had to fight and battle these people that were constantly coming against them. And uh, they weren't going outside their boundaries where they were told to come in. They were staying right there. And you guys, this whole world is wickedness, man. Yeah, you know, yeah. God said all the kings are in his hands. He turns their heads wherever he wants to. But these people still made covenants with death and hell. Okay, with the devil. Remember, he uh, offered uh, Jesus all the kingdoms in the world. Jesus overcame the world. He couldn't be seduced by the world in any way. And that's how we're supposed to be. Christ is an example. We, that's why he said, follow me. Okay? He came here in the flesh to show us how to get through this life. And not to love these things in the world. The parable of the seeds, it tells you what these things do. Most people are blinded because of it. <coughs> Anyhow, um, I've met people here, you guys. And I've watched them carefully, even after talking to them. And they would always be like telling people, you know, oh, I'll put a pep in your step, you know, make you feel really good. You know, and then they'll always say, I'm blessed. How about you? And they don't warn people at times. Then I would stop and witness to them. Do you realize we're in the last days right now? And he goes, oh, yeah. And I said, I mean, like now, this is it. It's over. He goes, oh, yeah. It's done. It's, it's over. You know, and they'll say what, they'll talk to you on your level where you're at. But then when they get away from you, they don't warn nobody nothing. And they're just telling them how great things are. And there's a lot of that here, you guys. This is why scripture tells you, test all spirits. And you got to be careful. You know, they're, to me, I think they're like gatekeepers or something where they try to keep you um, in this state of uh, delusion to where you can't see the times that we're in. And, uh, Guys, you got to look in the New Testament even where we were told to diligently uh, read the Word of God, teach it to your children. And it says, when you're out, whatever in your yard, and you, you know, teach it, teach it, think it, read it. And uh, when you're at home, teach your children and your children's children. You have to keep this diligently. Why? Because the devil here is diligently seeking who he may devour, diligently. Devil is, and they're all around us, man. But they're, it's not people think, oh, well, I'm gonna see him, the devil with his horns on his head. You'll see him. No, he's, he's coming as people. The spirits get into these people. What did Jesus do? He moved spirits from people. He said, Sin no more, something worse can happen. And uh, he says, Love not the world or the things that are in it. You know, these are the, these are the things and the signs that you know. If they're truly of Christ or not. And if they're of the world and the love of it, they're teaching it, preaching it, anything about this love in this world, and that's how everybody's gotten. This is why few people even acknowledge what we're seeing today, because most people can't see it. You guys, I see things in the beginning when I had my eyes opened up, and I told you I seen um I seen a face where he looked right at me and he winked at me. It's in Acts, I believe it says, where at this time, God, he winks at our time of ignorance. But now that's over. And he, he tells everybody everywhere to repent. <laughs> <coughs> repent of your sins. And uh, you guys, when you're in love with this world, the things that are in it, you got to repent of it. Because this is the things that Satan's constantly trying to turn you away. We had to repent because we were 
living like the devil, man. We were. We were living it not following Christ. You can't. If you love this world and the things that are in it, that's not of Christ. That's of the devil. Satan's the prince of this world. Anyhow, uh, Deuteronomy chapter 3. Or chapter 4, I'm sorry, uh, 2 through 4. You shall not add unto the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish out of it, from it, that you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you. What does it say? It says Satan makes war with, the, uh, with those that keep the commandments of God and the testimonies of Jesus Christ. And that's Revelation 12, uh, 17. He makes war with those that keep the commandments of God. That's at the very end of this book. Now look at what the very beginning of this book in Deuteronomy, what it tells you, what you should be doing. But that, but you should cleave unto the Lord your God, are alive, every one of you this day. That cleaves to the Lord. You know, who do you think is going to make it out of this place? Those that are cleaving to this world? Where Satan is the prince of it? Most of these people can't see. I've met a lot of people, you guys, that just bought, you know, 170 something acres of land and they want to turn it in, you know, farming or whatever. And, uh, you know, they say, oh, I ain't wearing no mask. I ain't doing this. I ain't doing that. What's going to happen where it says you can't buy or sell unless you get that done? Are they going to just walk away from what they just paid all that? Or are they going to say, well, I'll trust in the Lord and he'll turn that into water? No. <laughs> it's, it's scripture clearly says those who lose their life will save their life. You know, I've had mine destroyed here in 2014. All right? You got to walk away from it. You got to let it go. Remember the rich man? He couldn't do it. He wouldn't do it. <laughs> that guy literally could have sold stuff. You know, I'm talking about people that are in debt to these things. You know, and they can't even do that. They can't walk away from it. People don't want to believe it. And, they, and the world will, will make you believe. Here in uh, Deuteronomy 6, 2 through 3. That thou might fear the Lord thy God to keep all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you, and thy son and thy son's son, all the days of your life, and that thy days may be prolonged. Hear, therefore, O Israel, and observe to do it, that it may be well with you, that you may increase mightily. Okay? You guys, they're an example. Look at what happens when they backslide. They went into captivity. They went back to Babylon. That's another thing. Here in America, look at our fault lines. In the end of this Bible, it talks about how Babylon is divided into three parts. Look at our fault lines here in America. Yeah. Who do you think running all these corporations, man? They all go to the Pope, which is in, you know, Europe out there. They go to him, they bow down, they kiss his hands. All the presidents kiss his hands. I mean, all of them, all around the world. But it doesn't mean that America is in Babylon. America was a place where they set up. They set it up for destruction. For what destruction? For the rise of the Antichrist. This is where a lot of people are going to be sacrificed. See, when a lot of people here die, he's going to rise out of the ashes. What do you think uh, uh, the Twin Towers was? That was a sacrifice. That was the beginning of this, what we're in now. And it was about the DNA. The two towers, 23 and 23 is 46. You have 46 chromosomes in your body. Okay, Bush read 23, Obama read 46. Okay, that's what this is. When Jesus said, destroy this temple 2,000 years ago, and I'll raise it in three days, that building took 46 years to erect. Now, God's in control of everything. Everything happens. 
God knew how long it would take to build it the way he had it built. And he put it in their hearts to do his will. <coughs> Everything. You guys, these bodies were in their vessel. <coughs> Excuse me. My throat's real dry. Anyhow. A lot of people are in a lot of trouble because of this. And they're not going to make it. I'm going to cut this short. <laughs> you guys read uh, uh, Deuteronomy 11, 18 through uh, 28. Okay. I'll read 22 here. For if you shall diligently keep all these commandments, which I command you to do them, to love the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways, and to cleave unto him. Then I. Then then will the Lord drive out. All these nations from before you. And you shall possess greater nations. And mightier than yourselves. That's why it says. They're all in his hands. Everything. It always has been. Always will be. That's why all this is coming apart now. I'm telling you. When Satan knew his time was up here man. He knows he ain't gonna. He can't. He ain't gonna stop this. Well, then he's going to do is try to take as many to hell with him as possible. That's why it tells you to test all spirits, you guys. Okay? You don't need no ear tickling, and be careful. They'll be out there trying to pull you back in, man. In any way, very subtly. You know, devil's sick. Don't think that he's not. All right, you guys. All who repent, call in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and believe that he died and raised on the third day. You know, you will be saved by the grace of God. You'll be saved. <coughs> but you can't serve two masters. Okay? Satan's the prince of this world. Are you going to pick up your cross and follow Christ? <coughs> oh, excuse me. Man. I can't get this thing to even shut off. <laughs>